morning, everyone. Welcome to Camden Haven Anglican Church. I'm Tim Baxter. I'm Natasha. And it's great to welcome you to the first service for the year of 2021. Last year was a bit of a topsy-turvy year. Uh, things didn't quite work out as the way we were expecting at the start of the year. I wonder what your expectations are for 2021. Or a better question is, what are you praying for for the year 2021? Today, we continue in our sermon series called the Summer of Psalms, or as we're calling it, Hill Songs. They're the songs that the Israelites used to sing uh, as they walked up the hill towards Jerusalem for their festivals. And as they walked up the hill to Jerusalem, they would remember things about who God is and what he's done for them. Today, we're looking at Psalm 122. And one of the themes in Psalm 122 is about home. What's our true home? So here's a question for you. What does home mean to you? Or where is home for you? I was thinking about it in our 27 and a half years of marriage. We've lived in 10 different houses. So the question of where is home for us might be very different uh, to the question of where is home for you if you've always lived in the same place. What does home mean to you? Simon's going to come in a minute and speak to us from Psalm 122. Simon Abramovich, he's our youth worker and a scripture teacher at the local high school, doing a great job training and teaching our young kids about the Lord Jesus and what it means to have faith in him. He always uh, speaks very clearly and, uh, and makes the Bible very understandable. So really looking forward to his message today. We're going to read uh, Psalm 122. So if you've got a Bible, open it up. Uh, as we think about reading the Bible, I want to um, remind us of the words in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, which says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that Christians may be fully equipped for every good work. So as we hear God's word today, uh, let's think about how God is training and equipping us for the good works that he has for us to do. Natasha's going to read Psalm 122. Thanks. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. This is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord, according to the statute given to Israel. There the thrones for judgment stand, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Now it's over to Simon. The first time I got to go overseas, I was six years old and I was so excited. We we're going to Thailand and I got a few weeks off school and kindergarten. Uh, I was really, really pumped. We got to pack our bags or help mum and dad pack our bags. And I couldn't help but notice that we got another little bag. I thought to ask mum, I thought, oh, mum, what, what is this other little bag? And she said, oh, it's just for stuff to take onto the plane. You get to bring it with you onto the plane when we travel and we're going to put stuff like colouring in books and little games and gum to chew on when the plane lands for you. And I thought, that's awesome. Um, I thought to myself, actually, I'm going to pack some more stuff in this bag without you knowing about it. And so the night went by and I packed some of my, more of my stuff in there. We got to the airport and uh, we could, we got to customs and they're checking our bags and made it through. And I noticed that one of the customs security guards pulled my dad to the side. And he's having a bit of a chat and he's holding up my backpack. I thought, oh no, hopefully nothing's happened here. And the security guard <laughs> holds up my bag and pulls out a toy gun that I packed. I thought, totally fine, you can take that with you wherever you go to play cops and robbers. Um, not a great plan, apparently. And thankfully, the whole security team were in hysterics, and so were my mum and my dad and my sister. I didn't see what the big deal was, but. Anyway, I was so excited just to get to the destination. 
<laughs> thankfully, that was the way it went. But um, as we read Psalm 122, as followers of Jesus, uh, we realize that we are longing to get to our destination, heaven, the new Jerusalem. We are longing for our home, which is so much better. Like the kid on the school camp who is just homesick and says, I just want to go home. Or the kid at the bad birthday party and they think, I just want to go back home. Or even the 21.3 million refugees who are currently on our planet, who are unable to go home, who are vulnerable on their journey. The refugee is the closest um, to the Bible's view to the normal Christian life away from home, in a strange land, under threat on the journey. This summer, we're going through uh, the Psalms of Ascent, the Hill Songs. There's 15 of them written for the journey home to Jerusalem. So we have three observations from the passage today. Pray yourself home. Home is where the King is, and home is where the Lord is. First point, pray yourself home. Read along with me in verse 1, it says these words, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. In verse 1, we see how David felt when someone first said to him, let us go to the house of the Lord. Maybe David was in one of his army bases on the edge of the frontier, edge of the kingdom, months away from home. Someone said to him, let us go home. So he was glad, he was stoked. Just imagine everyone was 500 miles away in Babylon, scattered in exile. It's 538 BC and someone says to you, have you seen the newspapers? Have you heard the news? We are allowed to go home. After 70 years away, I was glad. Verse two says our feet are standing inside your gates. In verse two, the journey ends. We're inside Jerusalem and we are home. Verse 1, we're on our way. Verse 2, we're standing in the gates of Jerusalem. This psalm wants us to pray both of these emotions all the way home. This is a Christian who really cares about going home. There's a rhyme I heard a couple of times on uh, a youth camp from my youth leaders, coincidentally, when we wouldn't go to sleep and wanted to stay up all night. Uh, the rhyme goes, every Christian on their way to heaven goes to bed by 11. Fair enough. But I reckon there's a better rhyme from in line with this psalm. I reckon it goes a bit like this. Every Christian who wanders and roams prays Psalm 122 all the way home. Not quite as catchy, but considerably more true, I think. So excited at the thought of arrival. I think as Christians, we can easily treat heaven more like a holiday home than our home, a bit more like a holiday house than our home, because this is heaven now, right? We've got the beach, our family, the, a comfortable job, we're in retirement, we've got everything that we need. To be with Jesus is more just like a nice backup plan. It's a nice thing to have in our lives when life gets out of control and a bit messy. So as Christians, actually we're more like refugees, yearning for home than someone with a holiday house. Jesus says these words in John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Your room is ready. If Jesus has already done the DIY, he's prepared your room with your name on it, he really intends to bring you home. It's a bit different to, ah, oh, if you kill 20 bulls and goats, then maybe you can spend five minutes with him. You could come to church for years and never realize that it was all about a journey home. You could easily believe that it's just about helping your life now, giving you some good advice. You can flourish a little bit, 
be a better person. It's actually about your journey home to Jesus, rooted in the life and death of Christ. Do you trust Jesus to do the DIY? Do you trust that he's prepared a place for you? In his father's house, do you trust him to keep his promises? So today someone could say Psalm 122 verse one to you, shall we go to the house of the Lord? Do you want to trust Jesus, his promise and set out toward him? Well, if you're excited about that, wait for verse two, which is now our father's house. These next verses talk about the reasons why we should be excited. Our second point, home is where the king is. Verse three says these words, Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, uh, the thrones of the house of David. Jerusalem is good because it is bound firmly together. And verse uh, 4 connects it to the 12 tribes going up to give thanks to God. So what is good about the city? Not just the stones are built firmly together, but the 12 tribes are together. So unity, unity is what makes home so good. Unity because, verse 5, there stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Justice. There is unity and there is perfect justice. Where we're going is a place of unity because there are thrones for perfect justice, where the son of David is on his throne. He's good at justice. Justice is about being able to live without fear, the control and eradication of sin. Think about the year we've had. There have been some horrendous things, haven't there? Deadliest mass shooting in Canadian history. George Floyd killed by a Minneapolis police officer. Armored Arbery killed by two white men whilst out running in Georgia. The Black Lives Matter protests and those who were shot and killed for just having a different skin color or different opinion. Psalm 122 says that when you're home, no one will ever lie about you ever again. No one will ever be able to bring in war instead of peace. We won't be able to lie, fight or sin anymore. Our perfect king, a perfect justice on his throne in his perfect city, Jerusalem. And our last point, home is where the Lord is. Read along from verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be with, within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. What is good about this city? Jerusalem is all about peace and security. For the sake of brothers and sisters and the Lord our God. Salem means peace, so Jerusalem should be the city of peace. Refugees who pray spend a lot of time praying for their home. There's a lot of local churches on the northern beaches uh, who are helping refugees uh, just find places to live and suitable work. And I remember when I was down there um, years ago, don't worry, not in the hotspot of late, um, I remember having just hearing an interview with an Assyrian refugee and at one of the local churches. And she said that she spends a lot of time praying for her home, uh, for those who are there, for peace within that place. It's one of the main things that she prays about. And so as we read this Psalm, we can't help but ask, do we pray for peace and prosperity of our home city? Which isn't physical Jerusalem, but the new Jerusalem where we will be with our King. Hebrews 12, Philippians 3, Revelation 21 all speak of this new Jerusalem. The New Testament always points our eyes to the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem which God will bring down for us to live in. 
Revelation 21 says these words. We'll read just two chunks of it. So read along uh, from verse 9. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And in verse 22, it says, I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. The psalmist is totally invested in where he is going. This place that we have just read about in Revelation, he prays for his home. Do we just pray for your best life now? For safety, just for food, for good health? Or do we pray for our home, for where we are heading? Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow, grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace, the famous words of that famous hymn. Do the things of this world grow dim as we think of the place where we are going? It's the time of the year where everyone posts pictures on Facebook and Instagram of where they are, where they're able to travel to, where they'd like to be traveling to, uh, that can't be due to current restrictions. Uh, it's everywhere we look on social media. But what destination are you yearning for? This psalm is designed to make us feel that the destination where we are heading is absolutely worth it. It's worth the excitement. Don't settle for second best. Fix your eyes upon Jesus, upon your forever home in the new Jerusalem, then the things of this world will grow strangely dim. Our citizenship is of this Jerusalem. That is where we belong. Yes.
thanks Simon for that encouraging message. It's always important for us to keep our eyes fixed on the new home that Jesus is preparing for us. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. There are many rooms there. The place in God's new kingdom where God's king rules in justice and peace. Let's pray about that. Father God, we look forward to the new home Jesus has prepared for us and is preparing for us, where there's room enough for all your people. Lord, we long for justice and peace. Please help us to practice justice and peace in our own lives, in our community, with our family. Please help us to keep our eyes fixed on our eternal home, your kingdom, ruled by your King. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us this week, and I hope that we look forward to seeing you next week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Yes, I am a